Hi, my name is Omar. Welcome to my first introduction to programming video. Today we're going to talk about for loops, Python versus JavaScript. You'll find this video useful if you're a beginner to either Python or JavaScript, or if you're like me and you have experience in one and are maybe wanting to learn the other. Um, personally, I did a lot of JavaScript um, and doing, doing web development, but recently I've been getting more involved with data science, which uses Python as its primary language. So to me, it's interesting to see how the two languages uh, relate to each other. Uh, in both cases, JavaScript and Python implementing a for loop, will, you'll see that they're similar in both with slight syntactical differences. I would actually say that Syntax-wise, Python is easier to write than JavaScript. At least you don't have to deal with curly braces or parentheses. But JavaScript also has some strengths in that um, there's more built-in functionality, which can give you a little bit more control in your for loop. Without further ado, let's start. Uh, I, I'm here today using two different um, environments, online browser environments to just do live uh, programming. Uh, this one here is called Python Tutor. So you'll be able to see here, so if I go like this, it'll automatically run it and you'll see the print output. All right, and this will be also useful if I uh, name an array. you'll be able to see what is actually running under the hood of the language. So uh, JavaScript is, is uh, or JS bin here is similar. Whoops, not proper English, but whatever. And then we run it right here. Yep. So, okay, the, the easiest, easiest way to demonstrate is just gonna be to start. So let's start with an array, which is essentially a list of words or numbers that we're going to be looping over and doing something to. So let's say bar subjects equals and some subjects that I'm interested in. See what else? A neuroscience nerd. And why not? Squats too. Squats. Because that's a subject in its own right. And let's do the philosophy. Alright. So we got our array of subjects. Let's let's flip over here to Python and um, write our list. Kitten, hedgehog, monkey, platypus, iguana. Let's see if there's any other ones. Oh, of course, the infamous blobfish. All right. So we have our lists. We have our two different lists. Now let's start out with JavaScript. So any kind of introductory JavaScript book or course, you'll see a for loop that looks something like this. For bar i equals zero, i is less than subjects dot length i plus plus do the following. So to break so to break down what this is saying, it's saying for uh, so we're, we're, we're going to create an, a variable called i, which I believe stands for index, because that's going to be the index of where we're at 
in our, our array. So we'll start at zero, <clears throat> which of course is um, by convention, the first entry in uh, an array or a, a, a list or an object or anything is gonna be entry number zero. So we start at zero and we go all the way up until we still are remaining within um, the array. So in this array here, let's let's we can count how many objects it has or how many um, elements it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the length of this array is seven. Um, so as long as we remain, but of course, if you count it, it's going to be index zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. So as long as we remain less than seven, in other words, we can go up to six, then we're going to be running this loop. And you'll see that this is going to work out. Um, and, we're, and, we're, and we're going to address every element, and we're not going to go over. Because if we were to, for example, change this and be like 10, whoops, my number lock is not on, 10, then we would reach six and then we would go to seven and it'll be like, okay, wait, ooh, there's no seven here and it's gonna throw an error. So this way, we're in the clear. Okay, and then finally we tell it, uh, every time you go through this loop, we're gonna give it a set of instructions to do and then we're gonna say now we want this index variable to go up one and this is how you would do it in javascript to tell it to just to go up one if we wanted to we could tell it to go up by two so we do plus equals two uh, we want it to go up by five whatever but in this case we just want it to go up by one every time all right now what do we want it to do so let's just do the most basic thing which is let's uh print to the console some some statement about this item now remember we're so so let's go like this console dot log what are some good books for and then subjects i and then question mark now let's just run this and see what happens. What are some good books for data science? What are some good books for our history? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so hopefully you can see here what it did. So subjects I is meaning the ith index, the ith element of the subjects array. So as we, as we recall here, I is zero, it starts out at zero, so um, it goes, it, so I starts at zero, it checks to see whether I is less than subjects.length, and remember subjects.length here is seven. I'm gonna put in parentheses here. Actually, I think I do, I think I, think I can do it like this. Seven. Okay, which is seven. Uh, it's going to check to see is i less than 7, well, i 0. Okay, so then we're good. Um, we're going to do this. We're going to log what is what are some good books for, um, and then that, the 0 with element, which is data science, question mark. What are some good books? Box. What are some good box? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's do that again. All right. What are some good books for data science? Um, now, and then, so we so we can give it any more number of instructions, you know, hundred more instructions, whatever. And then after it's done with these instructions, it's going to add one to our index variable. And now it's going to be one. It's going to check if one is less than seven. Yes. So we're going to do this. And in this case, subjects, the I, th the, the, the first or the one element in subjects happens to be art history. So it's going to perform this task. And you can see that's why it's a loop. 
you know, it's going to loop through it until it reaches, um, going to keep on going and then it's going to reach six, right? So six right here is the last one. So six is less than seven. We're good to go on that. We're going to print the sixth element of our uh, array, which is philosophy. Boom. And we're going to add, we're going to add it one. So now our ver our I is seven. Seven is not less than seven. Seven is equal to seven. Um, and so it doesn't meet that condition. So it's not going to, um, it's not going to do anything. And in fact, just to show you here, we're going to say, we're done. All right. We're done. Cool. So this is the, the most common introductory for loop that you'll see in JavaScript. Now let's see how it could be done in Python. In Python, this, this specific way of doing it is actually not the most uh, basic, but you'll see that it's still pretty easily done. So in Python, you would write a similar thing like this. For I in range len animals print animal number and then here I'm using uh, a certain type of uh, Python formatting or string formatting. I'll explain that in a second. Whoops. I think I had too, too many parentheses here. Okay, so let's start. Uh, well, first let's start looking at the output. Okay, so it seems to be saying animal number zero is kitten, animal number one is hedgehog, blah, 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 all the way down to the blockfish. So it seems to be, again, looping through our list. Uh, in Python, this object uh, is called, this data structure is called a list as opposed to an array but they're the same thing, um, I think. <laughs> Maybe someone will argue that they're not the same thing, but I believe they're the same thing. Um, for practical purposes, at least, they're the same thing. So uh, print, um, so what is this range, len, animals, whatever? Well, let's look at what range is. Let's, let's, let's say, um, x equals range 10. Let's see what it says. Okay, it's a range instance. Uh, that doesn't really tell us much. Um, but what I will say is that, uh, and I, I guess I don't really know exactly how range works, but I, I believe it creates it in, um, an iterator. So it, it, like, it'll create like a sequence that goes from zero all the way up to 10, but not actually reaching 10. So it'll go from zero to nine. Um, so it'll be kind of similar, I think, as saying zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think. Mm, if someone want, if someone has a better estimation, then they can post a comment. Um, but for for the purposes of a for loop, this is how I. This is how I think of it. Um, so using this range with, with a number in, in, in inside the parentheses is going to give me um, a, a range of numbers to count, to count through. Um, in this case, the number that we put in is not 10, but instead it's len of animals. So that's the same as saying uh, subjects.length. It's just pulling out the length of uh, this list. In our case, the length this list is one, two, three, four, five, six, six animals long. So we're saying here range of six, which, as you can see, is probably is going to go up to like this. Okay, so we're telling again this variable i to go from zero to five. And then we're telling it uh, to print this string right here, which is formatted. Uh, these these curly braces right here, 
are um, like placeholders. So for the, the zero with the, like like the zero placeholder is going to be filled in with whatever i is, and then the the one placeholder is going to be filled in with whatever the i uh, element of animals is. So again, we have the zero with and the zero with element. So kitten one, hedgehog two, monkey three, platypus, and so on and so forth. So you see, uh, this is doing the same thing that this 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 Python for loop is doing the same thing that uh, this um, JavaScript for loop is doing. Now let's look at a Python for loop that is actually easier to write and in a lot of ways um, easier to think about and makes more sense intuitively. So this is kind of like the basic Python for loop or like the ground level Python for loop. So we'll say for thing in animals print I love this thing. Huh, interesting. So in this for loop, we didn't mention anything about the ith element of animals. We didn't mention anything about numbers or anything like that. We didn't say we didn't start at zero, we didn't go to the length. So that's because instead of thinking about the index of our of our list, this for loop is going straight for the element. So it reads like pure, it reads like normal English, which is really nice thing about Python actually. So we're telling it for every thing in this animals list, print the string, I love this, and then whatever that thing is. So it almost doesn't need any more explanation. Python under the hood, it goes and it checks what every, every element inside here and it does whatever we, we want it to. And you can see here, someone that really loves animals. Um, let's see how we can do something very similar in JavaScript. Um, so JavaScript in, in the most recent version or the one of the most recent versions of JavaScript, which is called ECMAScript uh, 2015, they included something similar, uh, which is easy access um, with simple syntax to get at a uh, at the elements of uh, of an iterator or an object or whatever. Um, so this is what we'd say for var thing of subjects. What 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 do we want to do? Let's say console.log bro. Do you even <laughs> ah, I cracked myself up. Oh, it's clear this, so it's more so it's more clear. Bro, do you even data science? Bro, do you even art history? <laughs> Um, okay, so you see a uh, very similar thing happen uh, for thing, and uh, of course, you know we have to name our 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 variable. We can't just say thing uh, like like in Python. Uh, we gotta at least let it know that we're 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 um, we're, we're calling a, a variable right here um, of subjects console dialog. So. Uh, you see here, uh, JSBin is giving me a little warning. So it says for of is available in ES6 uh, or Mozilla JS session. What this is saying is that this is a new feature and it's not featured fully in all the browsers. Internet Explorer. <laughs> but for the most part, you should be good using this. Now, keep really be really careful about using this because sometimes you might... Uh, kind of slip up and use for thing in because it kind of um, 
it makes sense like that's how you speak in English right for for thing and subjects do this but let's see if you run this we're not it's not really gonna work oh wait sorry it will work but not as we intended so you can see here that it's printing out numbers why is it doing that well because for in a for in loop is going to um, um, reference this uh, variable with every index in um, subjects. It's not going to reference it with every element. So I, I, I believe I believe that should make sense, right? So instead it's going from zero to one. So we, we how we could modify that is by saying um, by, by by treating thing um, like that index variable that like we had in the previous for loop. So we'd be like so we would say something like this. And then if we run that, we should be good. We have here our um, our Renaissance frat man. <laughs> All right, next let's talk about what we would do if we didn't want to um, go through the whole loop. So let's say we're looping through an array or a list and we want to keep on going down it until we find something. Um, until, like, like say we were looking for something and then we don't want to continue looping through everything. But the way you know that we have it written right now, we're telling it for every uh, for every index for every index or for every element in this array do blank. But let's say we don't want to actually do it for every index. So this is a case in which we introduce a special um, keyword, which is the same in both languages, called break. Um, and what break tells it to do, it says break the loop. Um, and usually it's combined with a condition. If and when this condition is met, then let's break the loop and not um, and not do anything else. So I'll show you an example. First, let's do it in JavaScript right here. Okay. So again, I'm going to use the for of syntax just because I find it to be simpler. Um, so let's say we want to do let's let's say we want to say something like this let's change it up a little bit a busy student would say i have homework in plus whatever that thing is okay but let's say we're going through this list of of, of subjects right um and then for every subject we're going to say i have homework in this but then what if we reach squats so squats is not really an academic subject. Um, maybe when we reach squats, it's going to be time to go to the gym. All right. So what we, and then once we reach squats, we're not going to do any of the other homework after it. So what we do in this situation? Well, let's set a condition. Let's just say if thing, so if the element that we're at equals squats, and we're going to do something else. We're going to say, okay, I guess we're uh, done with studying. And then after we print that, we're going to break. So, let, so, so let's see what happens, okay? I have homework in data science, art history, econ, synthetic biology, neuroscience, squats. Okay, I guess we're done with studying. Oh, okay, but what about philosophy right here? Well, that's what the break did. The break said, uh-uh, we're done with the loop. We're not going to continue along in uh, looping through this array at all. Um, if, there was, if, if, if there had been more things, so for example... Let's see, what's another interesting um, uh, college course? What's it called? Women's studies? Women's studies? Women's. Women's studies. All right. Let's see what happens here. Oh, look, see? Didn't, didn't, didn't do women's studies. All right. Um, 
and then just to kind of give you an example of well, what is happening would be like this is back when this is back when you uh, when you when when you stop studying and you go to the gym. All right, so let's see what happens here. Yeah. So that's what the break did. Uh, in Python, it'll be very similar. Um, so let's say here for thing and animals, and we want to do, we want to say something similar. Cool animal. We're, we're going to be showing a list of cool animals, but sometimes you see things that are like not really animals. Case in point. If it equals a platypus, then we're not really comfortable calling that an animal. So we're going to say something like this. WTF, mate. And we're going to break. We're done. <laughs> okay, so we start out kitten, hedgehog, monkey, platypus. Uh, no, we're done. We're done counting these animals. I can't even. And... Iguana and blobfish go to the wayside. So sad. All right, so you saw the break. And now there's something similar to break, um, but you may not necessarily just want to break the whole loop and just leave all the other remaining elements. Sometimes you may reach a condition where you don't want to um, perform the set of instructions on the loop on this particular iteration. So like, for example, Maybe we're performing some calculations on a set of numbers, right? And if that number happens to be really, really big, then it's not even going to be like worth it to do the calculation on it. It might take up too much time or something like that. So yes, we do want to loop through the entire array of numbers, but what we're going to tell the computer is that if we reach a number that's bigger than a certain threshold, then we're just going to skip over it. We're going to not do any of the calculations or the, or the process. We're just going to skip over to the next one. And the keyword that we use for that, which is again the same in JavaScript as in Python, is called continue. Um, so let, let, let's, let's do an example of that real quick. All right. Um, in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to do the range, the range, uh, syntax, uh, just so you can see it again for I in range len animals. Um, and let's going to say, and we'll just do the same kind of the same thing that we did before. All right, so we're going to do this, but let's say that um, for whatever reason, we don't want to do uh, anything that's in the third, um, the third index. So we're going to say if i equals 3, we're going to continue. So let's see what happens here. 0, 1, 2, the third one, nothing happened. It just skipped over it and it went straight to four. So that's pretty much what continue does. And um, finally, we're going to do it in JavaScript. So this example is going to be a little bit more involved. It's going to involve actually uh, nested for loops. So two for loops that are working within each other. And you'll see here what, what I'm talking about. So for um, let i and topics. And by the way, this let here is just a slightly safer way of um, than, than writing var. Um, because if you were to ever use i again outside of this for loop, if, if you had used var, it might, it might screw it up. So let here keeps the scope uh, limited to within your loop. So that if you ever want to use i later on, um, you can use it. Um, and it'll be it'll be good.
But anyway, I mean, at this point it's okay. So for let i and topics. So remember, we're using the n here. So we're going to be talking about in that indices. 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, so here's, so here's, here's the scenario. Oops, I'm sorry, I call them topics, they're supposed to be subjects. How do you spell subjects, the ith, the ith element in subjects? All right, so here's what I wanna do. What I wanna do is I want to grab every letter in that subject and I want to print it out on its own line. So how would I do this? Well, I could simply do another loop that grabs that element and then it loops through every element, uh, every letter in that string. And then it's nice because um, that kind of that functionality just is built into the language. So we'll say for J in subject, I realize I call this subjects. Um, I again another for loop. We're gonna do um, we want to console dot log subjects I J. So the J letter of the I element in our subjects array. This kind of, kind of getting into um, um, indexing of arrays, which is uh, maybe a slightly different topic, but uh, hopefully at this point um, you're learning about these things together. You know, for loops. This is like the introductory um, course in uh, in JavaScript and and, and and programming. So anyway, so okay, but so we're comfortable printing these out. But let's say if the, if it's too long. If like the subject is too long, then we don't want to print it out like that. So we'll say this: if is greater than let's say eleven, we're gonna say I don't know. Google it, and then. We're going to continue. We're going to move on to the next. We want to move on to the next subject. We don't want to. Um, we don't want to uh, have to uh, print it. So does that make sense? So we're saying um, if the subject is long, then we're going to continue and we want to move on to the next subject. But if it's not, if it's not longer than eleven, then we'll print every letter in it. Let's see how this works. All right. Okay, so this is interesting. So it's spelled philosophy, spelled squats. It's printing out, I don't know, Google it a bunch of times for all these other things. Um, so what's going on over here? Uh, so it seems to be printing, I don't know, Google it. Uh, many times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which I'm willing to bet is how many um, elements are in this string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It seems to have printed out, I don't know, Google it as many times as there were um, letters. And it doesn't look like it continued on anything. Now, why could this be? Well, if we think about it a little bit, we can see here that this continue is going to the next J. When we say that we want it to go to the next element, we want it to go to the next I, um, the next I index. But because this continue happens to be inside the nested for loop of the J, then it's simply going to the next J. So, and J here means letter. 
So it's going to the next letter of the same um, topic, which is I. And this can be a tricky thing um, to keep straight when you're doing nested loops. Now, there is actually a solution. Um, well, I'm going to show you a solution right now, but there's actually um, a, a, probably a slightly better solution, which I will be posting in the, in the description below, and it's called labels. So what you do is you would label, um, you would label your loop, and then when you can, and then after you say continue, you would include the label here um, to indicate which loop that you actually want to continue that you want to uh, continue to the next one of, or which loop you want to break out of. But like I said, I'm not going to go into that right now, just because I haven't really used it. Um, but I'm sure it's, it's a good avenue to explore. So the simplest solution word here would be to actually move this if statement with a continue, move it out of this for loop, and put it into this for loop. So now we ask, how do you spell the subject? And then we're going to check to see if the subject is, is short enough. And if it isn't, if it's too long, then we're going to continue. So we're going to jump up to the next I. Um, if this condition is not met, um, so if the subject is short enough, then we're going to enter our second for loop. And then now let's see how this goes. OK, this is looking a lot better. So it doesn't want to spell data science. So we go directly to the next subject. And synthetic biology and neuroscience are also skipped. Squats are spelled. And yeah. All right, guys. That's it for my video. Hopefully, I was able to shed some light on for loops in JavaScript and in Python. I'm going to include some relevant links in the description to this video below, including a link to my GitHub, which will have relevant source code for all the different loops that um, I implemented, in addition to some extra ones. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if you have any feedback about what works and what doesn't work on this video. If it was too slow, too easy, too fast, um, I would value your feedback as I try to make more useful programming tutorial videos. So, thanks a lot.